Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Death By, where contestants will earn reps for their arguments for a chance to stand on top of the podium pedestal. I am your host, Lauren Khalil. Whoever I decide has the best argument through the final round will earn 30 seconds to talk about a topic of their choosing. On today's episode, we have two-time Affiliate Cup champion and seminar staff head trainer, James Hobart. CrossFit semifinal athlete, Aaliyah Miller. And CrossFit Games athlete, Tim Paulson. Rock on, baby. <laughs> let's get into it and let's play Death By. Topic number one, team quarterfinals. It starts this Wednesday. And as our first look into what the second stage of competition is going to have in store for these athletes, what do you need to see and what don't you want to see when it comes to quarterfinals programming? Tim, you were on a team last year. What do you think must see and must not see for programming? I mean, I think obviously I only have one year of experience to talk about this. So take this all with a grain of salt. James has many, uh, he has some more years than me in there, but um, yeah, I mean, I think honestly they did a pretty good job last year. There was a nice mix of, for me, the biggest thing that I need to see is synchro work um, just because I think it's pretty well accepted that that's the hardest part of the team competition is figuring out if your team can actually work in unison with one another, synchronize movements, figure out how to strategically approach that stuff. Um, so I think two and four person synchro work is basically paramount. And we did see a good bit of that last year while still mixing in some of the classic kind of you go, I go stuff, a little bit of the male, female relay. So, um, yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is synchro work. Other than that, I think just test the team's fitness. And then we leave the all of the fun, actual team stuff to really kind of start at semifinals. And what does that mean? Oh, like the worm and all the all the stuff that you're like, yeah, like. I would go team another year just to, I love the worm. I thought it was a, so much fun. So I would go team again, just to, just to screw with the worm some more, but yeah, that's, we'll save that for semifinals. We don't need to ship worms to gyms all over the country to do quarterfinals. Probably not a financially not a smart financial. decision for most. <laughs> not for quarter, not for CrossFit anyway. Three points for Tim. James, what do you need to see and don't want to see? I didn't even want to get asked this question. Um, what? I was Why? Go I, I don't know. You know how the game works. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I know, I know. But I was hoping maybe this time you skip over me. Tim, I totally disagree from like a, I guess I think too much spectator now because I'm so washed up. But I hate synchro stuff. Um, but I guess you're right. From a, from a team perspective, testing, got to have some synchro stuff. I'd love to also see a relay. I'd love to see a heavy lift. Um, what else would I really like to see? I'd like to see more, I don't know, more relay stuff. I really like the relay aspect of it. I would like to even see, you know, a workout or two, maybe just one, one workout where you let, and this has kind of gone by the wayside in teams. They have done a much better job in programming and making sure like every, there's no weak link, but I did kind of like the era where teams had the ability to have like one person shine at a certain element. So like having a big chipper workout where maybe like someone who's really great at handstand pushups or pull-ups can like really stand out. And then maybe later on in the workout, there's someone else who can stand out. So maybe a single workout like that is something I would like to see as well. Um, probably going to get a lot of criticism for that, but like enough with the synchro stuff. That's it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> James isn't hates the word. Isn't that a huge small. point for I doing know. teams? Yeah, I know. I, you know. I don't know. But also in teams, I think it's really fun when you have somebody who, who really stands out at a certain thing and they get the shine doing something. I also really like the relay aspect of teams more. <clears throat> personally, I totally, I'm not saying that the synchro stuff doesn't actually test something useful and prove something, but just enough, enough with the synchro. You know, this show is not about whether I agree or disagree. And I appreciate that James stuck out his neck for this answer. So I'm going to give him four points. Yes. Finally, <laughs> four points. I was just talking Aaliyah. to somebody today who listens, says I don't get enough points. So thank you. You're welcome. Maybe it like <laughs> rubbed off. I heard them in my brain. <laughs> Aaliyah, what do you need to see and what should we not see in teams? All right. Well, I've never been on a team, so uh, just full disclosure there. Um, but uh, I think I would like to see synchro for sure. I think um, the two-person synchro and the four-person synchro is important about how you work together as a team. 
Um, can you actually be a cohesive team? Um, I also want to see some of like the waterfall style or the relay style, um, because I do think that's important to test individual fitness. I know we tested individual fitness in the open, but the open roster that qualifies a team to quarterfinals isn't necessarily the same roster that they're taking into quarterfinals. So I do think it's important to bring back some level of individual fitness. Um, and then I want to see something where they have to strategize how they use their team. So maybe each team member is doing something different, um, whether it's a different rep scheme or a different movement or something along those lines. And they have to figure out like, OK, who's going to be the best person for, you know, version A and who's going to be the best person for version B, whatever that looks like. Um, and then in terms of what I don't want to see, uh, I don't. I think they said it's only going to be four tests, not necessarily four scores, but four tests. Um, with four tests, I don't think we need to see any single modality. Mm. And five no more shuttle runs. Five point answer. No, no more shuttle run. <laughs> Three points for Aaliyah. Overall, Tim, did, did you have a comment to what Aaliyah said? I saw you nodding in your head. Well, we're all going to do shuttle runs. I mean, that's just, that's just a given. I think at this point, we're just kind of accepting our fate that we're going to bend over and snap a whole bunch. Do you um, want to place no, a bet I, on I agree that? about. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't think little, we're doing uh, shuttle runs. I I would put a decent amount of money on doing shuttle runs. How about um, how about if if we don't do shuttle runs, you have to do a hundred shuttle runs, but in a five meter increment or five foot increment. But you have to do it to the I mean, total do... volume. So you would do like whatever five times 50 is. <laughs> so you'd have to do a thousand five foot shuttle runs. Do I have to bend over and snap every time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I could do that. But no, I think I like what Leah said about uh, getting rid of single modality testing. Uh, I just think, honestly, it doesn't have a place until we get to, frankly, I would say semifinals, but honestly, even the games, I just think that like a single modality test doesn't have a place until it's in a larger balanced test, whether that's weightlifting or monostructural or gymnastics, it just doesn't like, if you're going to put a lift, like only a lift in there, put in a ladder style lift with another component, you know, like, like there are ways to make it so that, you know, Mongo can't just kind of come out and smash his event and move on. Um, you know, Mongo or Monget, I guess. I don't know what the, the female version of Mongo is, but, you know, yeah, I, I agree with that sentiment completely. And just online stages of competition, please no, like, no one or max this, one or max that, no 1K row for time. Like, please don't do that. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Moving on now to topic two. When speaking to several games athletes, most have said that they don't necessarily care about their open placement, but they also don't want to, as Jason Hopper told me, lay a goose egg on any event. As for quarterfinals, it seems to be a bit of a different story. For example, last year, nearly all top 10 men and women were games athletes or just missed qualifying after semis. So does ranking actually matter in quarters and truly give us a good picture of what the big players or who the big players are when we head to semifinals? I suppose we can talk about this for individuals or teams, just a big picture. Aaliyah, we're going to let you start this round. Um, I think generally, yes, it gives us a good idea of, you know, who we expect to be moving on past semifinals to the games. Um, but I do think there is always those few surprises of, you know, somebody that we expect to qualify because they were at the top of the semifinals leaderboard and then they don't make it or somebody who just kind of snuck into semifinals and then all of a sudden at the end of the weekend, they're qualifying for the games. Um, I think some of that has to do with the amount of effort people put into the semifinals workouts. Some people, their goal is just, hey, I just need to make it to semifinals and then I can lay it all out there. Um, or like last year, Bethany um, Flores was working through a back injury during quarterfinals. So she was, you know, just barely made the cut for quarterfinals and then qualified for the games. Um, there is also something to be said about the fact that quarterfinals are at your home gym where most people are very comfortable. Uh, and there is a difference between, you know, competing online and competing 
in person. Um, I think for most of the people at the top of the leaderboard, that doesn't really matter because they have plenty of experience online and in person. But we do occasionally see those people that are, you know, very close to the top of an online leaderboard and then they show up in person and they just don't have it just because they don't have the experience of competing in person. Mm. Three points for Aaliyah. James? Oh boy. Um, I was looking at some of the data from last year and it seems to be the case that like, if you finish for, I think in, in most cases, um, and I didn't look at everybody, but if you finish in the top 15 in your region in quarterfinals, at least based on last year's rules, looks like you have a pretty good shot of qualifying to the games out of your semifinals. There were definitely some outliers. And I think the outliers were really exciting. Um, in the Northeast, there was like Alex Vigneault finished 57th in his region in quarterfinals, ninth at the semis. Um, and then uh, Yellow Hosta, 44th at quarters, and then um, fourth at semifinals. And I think he went on to finish something like a top 10 at the games. So for the most part, yeah, I do think it matters, it just in, especially if you're putting out, um, and it matters probably in the perspective of the individual, are you putting out a performance where you're like really trying hard? Because I think if you are and you finish in the top 15, you probably have a pretty good shot of also succeeding at semifinals and making it to the games. I think if you're just going there, you know, for all those reasons discussed earlier, like I'm just trying to test things out or I'm nursing another injury. I just need to pass through quarterfinals to get to semis. Probably not a huge indicator, but you know, a lot of the data suggests that, yeah, those, those rankings matter. People should pay attention to it. I think one nerdy thing I'd be more curious to know is like what types of quarterfinal workouts are, you know, have the best correlation with finishing well at semifinals types workouts. Mm -hmm. I think last year it was that, um, the event five, which was the um, um, front squat weight, handstand, front squat muscle up, and then finish with the chest to wall facing handstand pushups, had the best overall correlation with quarterfinals finishing. Seems to be the case that it had a really strong correlation for, for finishing well at semifinals too. So curious to see what workout that is this year um, in quarterfinals, which I think the programming is going to be pretty cool. James wore his button up today. No. He brought the data. Like, who are you, James? What's happening? I've won this show like three or four times. What do you mean? What's happening? <laughs> he also just leaked that he knows the workouts. I didn't say that. I just said, I think they're going to be pretty cool. <clears throat> Five points for James. It's just a vibe. I feel like the whole, you know, the open was really cool. It's just like, it's following a trend. You thought the open was cool? I do think the open was cool. <laughs> no, I enjoyed the open. Yeah. Okay, Tim, what are your thoughts? Does quarterfinals placement matter? I think absolutely. Um, you know, I think barring the one outlier, I would say, is like depending on the programming we get. And this is assuming that the programming doesn't have any of those kind of extreme outlier workouts, you know, something like a single modality test or where one element basically completely shines repetitively, which has happened on at least some tests. But I think honestly, a lot of the semifinals, especially with the reduced spots this year for like, you know, North America, East, West, Europe, stuff like that. Um, no one's going to leave any stone unturned. I don't think any athlete, even some of the fittest people in the sport are confident enough to give an 80% effort and assume that they will get to semifinals. I think that would be a very naive perspective to take. Um, I guarantee you that every athlete, no matter your level, you know, podium at the games or trying to qualify for semis or whatever it is, you're giving every single one of these workouts a 10 out of 10 effort. And you're probably going to retest one or two workouts without mm -hmm. question, especially with how long the qualifier window is. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw most athletes retesting at least one or two workouts. Um, so yeah, I think it absolutely matters. And, you know, again, the data kind of shows that again, doing well in quarterfinals generally bodes well for semifinals, but I think more from just like the effort that the athletes are going to put in perspective because of how competitive and how tight getting to semifinals is no one's going to risk, as Jason Hopper said, laying an egg in quarterfinals and accidentally screwing up their entire season because they didn't give a workout absolutely everything they had. So I think athletes' results are going to be very reflective of their like actual top-level fitness right now, barring an injury or something like that where you're just trying to, again, you know, kind of milk your way through. But yes, absolutely matters. And, and since less people are going to semifinals, do you think that it's – so for instance, if I am Laura Horvath, who won the CrossFit games last year, is she looking at 
qualifying for semifinals different this year when it comes to maybe the other years she went an eight out of 10 that she would in fact go 10 out of 10 now? I mean, honestly, probably yes, because again, you just don't know, like the field only gets deeper every year. And depending on what programming you get, like even the most well-rounded athletes in our sport might have a workout that just throws them for a loop. So I don't think you can really, I just don't think anyone's going to risk it. Like it, it's far too tight. The details matter way too much. And a couple reps here or there can cost you, especially if we do see a single modality workout where a couple pounds on a four at max lift or a couple seconds on a 2K or whatever it is can be the difference between like hundreds of spots. So yeah, I think, you know, people like that are obviously more confident than most, I would say, with good reason that they will make it through. But yeah, I still don't think they're going to leave anything on the table. Like there's, yeah, definitely not. Four points for Tim. Do you guys think that then once we get to semifinals, that the ranking that people have in quarterfinals will be a better reflection of their placement at semifinals? Or do you think that variable kind of as Aaliyah discussed that one variable of going from your home gym to in person is enough to shake things up? I think that what Aaliyah said, like the competition experience and being able to perform on a day when you're not in your comfort zone, but also again, just comes down to programming, like depending on the breadth of the programming, the style of the programming for quarterfinals, especially with the bigger population pool, you're going to assume that the workouts are going to be maybe a couple more ladder formatted or kind of buy-in type efforts or earn more time type efforts where more people can play. And you're just not going to see that at semifinals. So Yes, overall fitness will still shine and the people who are very fit will do very well, but the workout format could, again, we don't know, but it could be different than what you see at semifinals by virtue of trying to appeal to a larger population. Okay, let's now move into round number three. If you haven't heard of Reps Ahead, it's a pretty cool concept of one-on-one -on -one matches for just a single workout between athletes. This past winter, we also saw a new concept at FitFest where many individual games athletes threw down at a showcase on teams. So do one versus one competitions have the most legs when it comes to growing the sport outside of competitions or does teams, or is it something else? James, we will start this final round with you. I know you're a big fan of reps ahead. Yeah, no, I, I am. Um, you know, shout out to uh, Phil Thomas and his whole crew who's kind of started that thing and, and got it going. I actually competed in one out here in Colorado and got totally destroyed um, by everyone there, <laughs> and specifically uh, Tyler Eggerman, who's one heck of a fit guy. But honestly, watching the event and doing it, it was really, really fun. It was one of those things where I was like, I went into it and I was like, this is kind of corny. It doesn't really make a lot of sense for CrossFit. And I think it is completely different from like our traditional com competitive season. Two athletes, you know, head to head and one athlete, they're doing the same reps until some sort of time cap or until one of the athletes gets a certain number of reps ahead. And um, it was really fun. It's super exciting. It's like watching like a quick drag race of CrossFit. Um, <laughs> And it seems like it's picking up some steam. They just had a bunch of pros doing it. I don't know. I really like it. I think it has the potential to gain a lot more traction. At least I hope it does. And I think it was really fun because it's a completely different format, but it still has, you know, basic CrossFit movements. It wasn't really that kitsch, which was cool too. So I don't know. I have a lot of good to say about it. I think there's a lot of opportunity for growth there because it's easy for a spectator to watch it. It was really easy for the gym, the affiliate space to run it. And, um, while it like destroys you doing it, it's a pretty short effort, you know, as maximum effort from an athlete perspective. So I think um, because of those reasons, it has the potential to grow for sure, especially because of the logistical ones. Like it's easy mm -hmm. to pop up at a gym. That was way over a minute. Sorry. <laughs> Three points for James. Tim? I mean, I think this kind of goes, I think it just lines up well with what we've kind of been talking about a lot on a lot of shows recently is just like the getting into more of a showcase style of event that will draw people into the sport you know whether like we've talked in the past about one day competitions or one event competitions like things that are less abusive in the grand scheme of a training cycle off season things like that but that still draw people in and athletes actually want to do and have fun doing so i mean yeah i think this is another spin-off or variation of that where we're just looking at like hey you just tune in for an hour or less and you get to view some fitness. It's really engaging. It's exciting. And it has a great opportunity to draw on some sponsors and 
again, kind of spin up the offseason and just just change things up a little bit. So I think this is, again, another great step in that direction of moving towards not these multi-day, highly abusive competitions that athletes really have to plan their seasons around and more towards these events where it's like, oh, yeah, I'll go just send it for like five minutes. Like, that, that's fine. I can do that on any given training cycle any day of the week. It's not a not a huge thing I have to plan around. I don't have to completely reorient my training cycle for the year. So, yeah, I think it's fantastic. And I hope we see more of this and more of things like it. Mm. Three points for Tim. Aaliyah, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think what Tim was referencing where it's not like a brutal two to three day competition where you're doing six, seven, eight, nine workouts over the course of a weekend. It's just a single workout. So it's easy on the athletes. Um, and then also from a spectator perspective, uh, I think it's a really cool opportunity to bring in more spectators that might not fully understand CrossFit yet. Um, the reps ahead format is super easy to follow. It's like, Hey, this person is ahead. Are they <laughs> continuing to stay ahead? Oh no. Now this person is ahead. And so it's like, Oh, they got far enough ahead that they won. Like the, it's, you don't have to understand the workout or the movements or what's happening to understand that person's winning. Now that person's winning. Um, so I think from bringing, growing the, the audience of competitive CrossFit, I think it's a, a really good format to do that. Um, especially compared to the team competition, like fit fest, where it can get really confusing with so many people on the floor, so many things going on that for people who know CrossFit, it's really exciting, but for people who don't understand CrossFit, it's just confusing. Um, and then it's also just pretty easy from like a broadcast perspective to, you know, broadcast that single workout, uh, easy to talk about a single workout, only two athletes. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, a really cool opportunity to grow a uh, competitive CrossFit. Mm -hmm. Four points for Aaliyah. I do really like how much you can follow along and it's very basic, whether you do understand CrossFit or not. Do you guys think that a format like this, knowing that it's just one workout and it's not going to be something that's totally brutal on their body, that you could actually have some of these matches throughout almost the entire season? Obviously, maybe after semifinals and up to the games, there's a lull period, but something that is easily attainable or easy for an athlete to commit to? Yeah, I think so. And I hope so. Um, and one of the things I think makes it a little bit more enticing is because like you said, it is that one day, it might even be like one or two events in a day. So yes, it is like maximum output, which definitely crushes you. Like I, I won't lie. Like <laughs> I was so out of my element doing it. I haven't trained like that. I've never been like a good sprinter, but doing the event, like I was destroyed during it, but then it was like two hours later or whatever, you know, walked out, had lunch, had a great day. I think that's really good for athletes. Um, but also, like I said, I think what makes it easy is because we can test this out a bunch because it is such a logistically light event. It could be something or an event like this could be something they test out a lot to like really tweak and get right. It's not like they need 500 competitors and all these volunteers and all this stuff and 28,000 porta potties and all that, <laughs> um, which takes a long time to test events if that's the the level of effort for the event. So yeah, I definitely think it's something that's possible. I'm Is curious. This... So I didn't watch, I didn't watch the first reps ahead. What was like the movements or workout that they had people doing? Uh, this one was, uh, man, this one was, it was a sequence. Um, I don't know what the time cap was on it of, um, what 36 double unders, six hang squat, clean six bar muscle up. And then they keep repeating that for, I don't know what the time limit on it was. Um, Isn't it just until one athlete gets a certain number of reps ahead? Isn't that why it's called reps ahead? Yeah, sometimes. Yes, but I think they, they have. I think the time cap was seven minutes because oh, otherwise okay. it just goes on and on. And then the, when you accumulate the volume, I think it's a way to kind of limit that. Tim, you would be great at one of these events. Oh, I think it sounds like so much fun. I was just thinking in my head, I was like, God, how good would it be if they just put two assholes on echo bikes and they just basically put, like pinned up the monitors and it was like, who's going to sprint when and try to keep like, I'm just foreseeing this absolute thrashing of pain on any machine not just echo bike like a row or whatever it is like where you're just like if someone like you kind of choose when you sprint to try to catch up to the person so like i see that being like really fun to watch as a fitness enthusiast that other people might not get it so much but like 
for for crossfitters who know how bad machines hurt watching something like that could be like like watching someone try to keep up their pace on an echo bike to catch somebody would be just grueling and wonderful to watch it makes me makes me smile inside and everyone likes a foot race you know it's like i think that's what's nice about it too it's just there's something really alluring about that so this last one it was six bar muscle ups 36 double unders six hang squat cleans 110 for the ladies 165 for the men for seven total rounds and you did it as an interval with two minutes on and one minute off for something like this does programming matter or is it just a watchability and making it a race and something fun for the sport i think exactly what you said on the back end there as long as it's fun to watch that's all that matters like this is this doesn't have to be a beautifully programmed event every time as long as the programming suits the purpose of engagement this isn't branding itself as a fitness test or anything else like as long as it's fun to watch and not going to kill anybody like yeah yeah, there's nothing on the line here. If it was, you know, when we talk about programming for open quarterfinals, semifinals, whatever, like that's qualifying you to the next step. Programming for the games is supposed to be finding the fittest on earth. But programming for something like this, is it fun to watch? <laughs> and is it fun for the athletes to do? <laughs> and that's what we're trying to do. But without further ado, James Hobart and his button up came to play today. He is our <laughs> champion. <laughs> And you will advance to podium pedestal. Congratulations. And just for the record, I, think, I don't mean to gloat, but I think this might be four or five wins for me. Just saying. <laughs> Who's counting? Um, can I go? Is this thing yeah. on? Okay. So, you know, and I don't want to sound like I'm towing the party line too much. So what I will put a disclaimer on here and say, if you don't want to pay to sign up and do quarterfinals, but you still want to do the workouts anyway, great. Do them. Um, with the larger percentage of athletes who are going to be eligible to do quarterfinals this year compared to last, I would just strongly encourage people to, however they feel about them, to give them a shot. I think it's a really important part of um, our fitness growth to submit ourselves to standards that are not our own. Whether you do great in the workouts, you're only able to do half the workouts. Um, I think it's really important to give it a shot. There's a lot of growth there that is more important than wherever you end up on the leaderboard if you do want to sign up. The other thing I would say is those of us who are not competing, um, support those people who do want to compete, especially if it's their first time kind of progressing in a CrossFit competition like this to a second level. If you're someone who gets along with somebody who's kind of unsure, be a good judge, be a good supporter, be a buddy, help them set up equipment. Um, if we have to put tape lines down on the ground, that's all of honestly the hardest part of quarterfinals. So be supportive that way. It's a really cool opportunity for those who have never advanced in a CrossFit competition. So I wish you all good luck and hope you guys do it. Heck yeah, I've already paid and I'm ready to play. <laughs> Put those tape lines down for shoulder runs. <laughs> I love this bet. I don't think there's going to be shuttle runs and I want to watch Tim do a million shuttle runs. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Con congratulations, James. Good luck to every... Are you going to test the team workouts, Tim? Just for funsies? Uh, I'll do the individual ones for sure. Yeah, I'm going to do individual okay. quarterfinals. I might even sign up if I'm feeling feeling frisky. Okay. Just to see well, how see how my fitness is held up. <laughs> we'll wait and see. Thanks for playing, Tim, Aaliyah, James. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Good luck if you're taking on team quarterfinals, and we will see you next time.